Hello, ladies and gentlemen that are joining now. We're going to give a couple of minutes for everyone to join in. So uh, give it a couple of minutes and then we will start the session. Hello everyone that's joining the session right now. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes to let everyone join in as this one is a live session and then we'll get going. Thank you very much for joining me. Hi everyone that's just joining, we're just going to give it about 30 more seconds to let a few more people join and then we'll get started. Thank you very much for joining me. Hello everyone, thank you ever so much for joining me on this session, which is the second Microsoft List sessions that we've had for Define Tomorrow. My name is Barry Coombs, I'm Chief Technologist here at Computer World, and I'm going to run through some of the technology that hopefully you've already seen in my previous session around Microsoft Lists, but have a look at some of the more advanced features, and then we're going to go and have a look into Power Automate to see how we can create flows to connect lists to other elements and do more intelligent things. So as I previously discussed, Microsoft Lists is an evolution of SharePoint Lists that has been around for a while, but it's now been enhanced and packaged differently. So it's available as a standalone application in Microsoft 365. And for me, the power of Microsoft Lists is A, when you align it to your business, align it to your organization, understand the use cases that aren't currently covered by your central business systems, where you need to track information through a variety of stages. So this isn't really a replacement for a to-do list or a planner application. Whilst you could make an enhanced version of one of those applications, this is more useful for tracking an information flow or projects or anything like that through uh, your organization. So this session is live. It is a webinar session, so we can't hear you, but please feel free to use the chat functionality or the Q&A functionality. Whilst I can't promise I'll be able to answer every question, it'd be really good to get a bit of interactive conversation going during this session. And there's no slides in this session. This is certainly going to be a little bit more of demonstrations and showing you how some of these things work. So without any further ado now, we're going to jump into Microsoft List and I'm going to show you some of the functionality that we didn't cover in the first section that may help you when you're creating your own list for your own requirements. So we're here in the Microsoft List dashboard. Uh, to get to that, you go to office.com, click all applications if it's not visible, and you should be able to access it from there. What we're going to do first is we're just going to roll out a list from a template. So I'm selecting the option for a new list, and I'm going to choose the option for employee onboarding. And I'm going to just use that template. Now, don't forget here to name uh, each of your lists something meaningful to make sure you can find them because whilst you're creating them inside your own um, uh, list portal inside teams the context may help you find it but when you're later trying to automate it or sharing it with others that name has really got to be relevant um, so I'm not going to go through each step as we did that earlier on but I'm just going to go and create uh, a list from the template 
Now, I want to do a few things here. So when we go and have a look at some of the customizations, we're able to add those. So I'm just going to add a column here and it's going to be multiple lines of text. And this is going to be called um, progress log. This is going to be somewhere that as an employee is going through the various different tasks of the onboarding process, we just want to be able to keep a running commentary as to what is going on at any given time. So we're going to save that one. I'm also going to add a start date column in here as well. So I'm just going to click the list and I'm going to go down to date and time and choose start date as my option to include inside of here. So we've got all of the elements now. We've customized this template out of the box to add those elements that we need to help us use this for our business purpose. Now, before we start encouraging people to use this, we need to be looking at um, the, some of the features that go behind list that make it work. So what I'm going to do is just go up to the top here and I'm gonna choose list settings from the menu. And now you can see that we're in a view that looks very much like SharePoint. In fact, it is SharePoint. And we can see a number of different settings. So one of the things is, is if you're tracking important information in a list, you will want the ability to have visibility to see what information has been changed and who has changed it. Um, we may also want the ability to be able to approve certain pieces of content before they're published for everyone to go and see. So it's very easy to enable that, but it's not, this, uh, not enabled by default. So the first thing we want to do is come through and click versioning settings. And in here, we can configure both of those elements. So the first one I'm going to do here is require content approval for submitting items. And the second one is create a version each time an edit of an item in the list. So you can put whatever number in here that is relevant for the amount of versions you want to keep. There's no real overhead in terms of the amount of information that's going to be stored. It's generally text-based. Um, and generally, your lists aren't going to have tons and tons of information. So what we also now want to uh, go and do, we're just going to enable that for draft uh, uh, elements on approval. What we can see down here on the bottom is who should go and see that draft content. So the example would be, let's say that we are using an onboarding plan here. And involved in the onboarding plan is the manager, the HR professional, and the employee that is following everything on this list for the things that he should be doing during an onboarding period. Now, maybe the, maybe the manager and the HR professional wish to work together to create items which then need to be approved before they're able to be viewed by that um, uh, employee that is going through the onboarding program. So what we can do here, we can choose the option to uh, any, uh, any user can read the items irrespective of whether they're drafts or not. Those are non-approved items. Only users can edit items. So only users can edit items can view that. So again, that would be down to the permissions, which we can go and look at in a moment. Or only users who can approve items and the author of the item itself. So in that example there, that if the manager was creating items and the HR professional was signing them off, then the employee wouldn't see them until each of those line items got to the approved status. So I'm going to set it to that and I'm going to go and click OK there. Now, we also want to go and have a look at uh, the security settings. So in the middle, we can see the permissions for this list. Now, it's important out of the box when you create a list and you are connecting it to a SharePoint site, it is inheriting the permissions of that SharePoint site. And as you probably will have seen in Teams, which is clearly connected through to that SharePoint site as well, everyone has quite an ability to be able to customize things. So out of the box, if you created a list that is going to, um, uh, out of the box, if you created a list that is going to be storing important business information, you would um, want to make sure that other people couldn't change that list, change the structure of the list. Now, I'm getting um, a point now saying the screen's quite blurry, so I'm just going to try and change my resolution a minute. Bear with me one second. It's the lowest resolution I can get, but what I'll try and do is zoom in. Hopefully, as I zoom in on the relevant areas, that might be a little bit better. Yeah, 
Can people see what is on my screen a little bit better? Fantastic. So I'll zoom in just so hopefully you can see what's going on uh, a little bit better as I go through. So out of the box, the settings from Microsoft List will align to that SharePoint site. You get the owners, you get the members, and you get the visitors. So the owners being the, the team uh, owners or the SharePoint site owners, the members being those employees, those people within your organization that you've added in, and visitors largely being the people from outside your organization that are viewing. So what we want to do here, because we want the list to have a different set of permissions to the rest of the team or the SharePoint site, we're going to choose stop inheriting permissions at the top of this list. Now, the change that we want to make now is the owners are the people that we want to be customizing the list, adding records, doing the relevant uh, elements. What we want to do is change it so the members can contribute to this list, but not fundly, fundamentally change the way it works or the information that is stored. So I'm going to choose the option here for uh, members. And we can see the people that are in there from a member perspective. And if I just go out and I click the box to the left hand side and I go edit user permissions, we can see here that by default, members have edit permissions. They can add, edit, delete lists, can view, add, and update, and delete list items and documents. So they actually get quite a lot of control out of the box. Now, for most organizations where you as an owner of this list want to control it and just get people adding data to it or updating data, updating information, you probably want to go and change their permission to contribute. That means that they won't be able to have any of that customization other than changing the views that they may need, but they will be able to go and contribute to that. So I'm just going to go and click OK there, and then we're going to head on back over to the Microsoft list. So got a few questions coming in uh, now. Don't know if Megan, you want to read them out? Yeah, so we just got one that says, can Computer World assist with SharePoint list configuration? Yeah, of course. So if this is something that you don't want to tackle yourself, it's not something that you are going to be doing internally, we can, of course, help you with the list configuration, um, starting all the way from capturing the requirements and the outputs you're trying to get from the list, all the way through to creating the list and then creating the automation. So yes, no problem at all with that one. So we've gone and created some information in here. So I'm just going to go and add some records into uh, this list. I'm going to edit it in grid view so it's a little bit uh, quicker. So I'm going to say read staff handbook. I'm going to say um, update records. So we're starting to add a few records into there. Now what you will see first of all is whenever the information is created it is automatically now put in the list as a pending status. And if this was a member and not an owner, they wouldn't have any ability to be able to go and approve that. Uh, they would have to wait for the owner of the list to go and approve that. Now, the owners can get a specific view to go and look at what they need to approve, or they can also get a notification about any approvals they need to make. So if I just exit the grid view, I can go and show you that from the drop down here, we tend to get an approval item that goes and shows you the ones that you need to go and approve or reject. So it's very quickly as an owner to go and filter this list by the work that you need to do at any given time. And don't forget, lists can be used for a number of different uh, use cases. You could use this for an IT help desk if you really had no better solution. Not something that I would probably recommend, but for a small organization, it might work. And then you could build these workflows into it. So I can come and right click on any of those and I can go and choose the option to approve or reject each line item. I'm going to choose to go and approve this. Of course, you can put a commentary around that as well. Now, I'm just going to go and move back to my all items view. And inside here, I'm going to go and update some of the values. So uh, read staff handbook, you will find this on the intranet. And don't forget, we also added a progress log down here. So as an employee, I could come on here and say, um, we'll be starting this next week. And I'm just going to close that. So we can see that that has now gone back to a pending status. So we would approve that before it is then available for everyone else on the wider list to go and view. But there's some nice things that we can do inside of here that um, really add some value to the list. So the first thing I want to go and have a look at is the progress log. And if I go into there and I click edit, we can use the option here to append changes to the existing text. Now, because this is a progress log, because this is a progress log, you will be able to go and see uh, the ability um, 
because this is a progress log, you will be able to go and see all of the updates that have been made. So instead of every time you update it, it deletes the previous information, it will append that information continuously on top of it. So I'm going to choose the option to go um, uh, yes and add that. First of all, we can now see in this view, we can't see the entries here. We have to go and click view entries, and they will then be brought up in this view that we've got here. So we can see the progress log there. So now if I edit this, I can now go um, just starting this, really enjoying the health and safety section, said no one ever. So we've added that item into the list. And as we can see, we can see the time, the update, and who did it. So we've got a nice continual log of all the things that are going in that specific uh, view. What I wanted to also show you is if I make some changes to this, so I'm just going to go back to the previous view. And I'm going to go and change this to um, please look on the HR list folder in the shared drive. So that's been changed. Just click out of that to save that. What we can do is click the free ellipses and choose version history now because we've enabled version history on this item. And we can see each and every change that has been made to that. So we can keep a track of what's going on. We can make sure there's no rogue edits going on or anything like that. We've got complete control and version history for what is going on. Now, the other, other thing that we can do, and we'll see if this works um, first time uh, quickly during a demo, is I'm going to choose the option to just open one of these. And I'm going to choose the option to delete that item. So that item has now been deleted from the list. So we can't see it in the version history because we've deleted the item. Now, what we can do is go and look at the site collection recycle bin. So if I come through to uh, list settings and I then go and click again and I go to site settings, we can go and see the recycle bin here. And from here, we can go and see the records that we will have deleted. So we should have one in there for now. I think it's that one there, the time is uh, set to another, and we can choose to go and restore that data back to the list if we should so want to. So we have a number of different features that we can do inside of here that allow us to get better control for what is going on inside of the list and have that visibility. So we can see we've got our two records back now. Okay, that's fine. So I, I've got to remember to try and zoom in. I'm seeing a few more questions on that. So the recycle bin by default keeps 93 days worth of data before it is deleted. Uh, Microsoft then keep a further 14 days that you have to request back from Microsoft, but that's not such an easy process. So I'd recommend having a third party piece of software that allowed you to do the backup to that point. Now, I'm going to go and create a calculated um, column now. So before I go and do that, let's go and add a bit more data to some of these records. So I've got a start date that I'm just going to go and populate. Uh, 12th of the 12th of 20. So we've gone and added that. And I'm going to choose the completed uh, date as well. Let's make it afterwards, all this is going to start to get. So what I want to do now is add a field that's going to calculate the difference between each of those days. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to choose the option to add a calculated field, which isn't shown on this screen. I have to click more, which again takes to us through to a SharePoint-esque view. And I'm going to choose a calculated field. And I'm going to say number of days. And very simply here, and you can do things a lot more complex, but I'm going to go and choose the start date, no, completed date, minus the start date. And I'm going to go and click OK. Now, see, we get a record added. I've got something not quite right there with my dates by the look of it. I need to go and uh, I'll go and look at that. But we see we've got a calculated field there. I don't think the calculated on um, went incorrectly. Completed on. Let's go and choose. There we go. So that, pro that took 12 days to complete. So you can see that we can create dynamic fields there that are able to 
um, create calculations on the fly inside your list. Right, so if, other than uh, being able to go and customize the views, which I think I've already covered before, but I'll happily cover if anyone wants to look at that, let's go and have a look at how we can start connecting multiple pieces of information together. So what I'm gonna do first is I've created a very simple form in Microsoft Forms called Simple Form. Now we're gonna use this to collect some information. This could be on your website. It could be inside your organization. It could be on a stand at a trade show. Whatever you want to use for, you could go into Microsoft Forms and you could go and create a form. What we want to do is then pipe that information through to Microsoft Lists so we could then action it in some different way. So we've got our form and I've gone and also created a very simple list. So we've got a very simple list here that was created as a blank list that has just got name on it. So that is just there for tracking this information uh, that we want to go and track. Clearly we could come and add additional columns to this if we want to. Uh, so we could choose a, a date and time column, um, low time to arrange meeting or date to arrange meeting. Struggling with my caps key, there we go. And we could further build out the information that we need. Now we're gonna go over to Microsoft Power Automate. You can get there to flow.microsoft.com, log in with your Microsoft 365 credentials. If you're extending the functionality around Office 365 or anything like that, you don't need additional licensing. It's only when you're trying to do the more advanced elements or um, integrating with the other parts of um, uh, Microsoft 365 or anything else that you're going to need some form of licensing. Now I'm going to go and choose to create a brand new flow and it's going to be an automated flow. That means that it triggers upon an action. I don't have to go and click a button. It doesn't happen on a schedule or it doesn't happen when something is clicked in the UI. So I'm going to choose the option here to go and uh, automated from blank. We then come up with a wizard, which I'm going to call this simple flow live. And what I'm going to choose to do is when some information is added to that form, I will then want to go and take an action. So what I'm going to choose to do from here is go and search for forms. And when a new response is submitted, I then want to do something. So I'm going to select that one. And under the form ID, we're going to drop that down and we're going to find the form that we've created a moment ago. So we can just see it here. And again, this is why it's so important to make sure you name things meaningfully so you can go and find them at these later stages. So you can see in the drop down here that we uh, can just go and choose the simple form. Now I'm gonna add a new step into this flow. And what I want to do, now go and do is get the information that we've collected on that form. So again, I'm gonna go and type forms. And I'm gonna choose the option to get the response details. So again, we just go and select the form and the response ID is the one that we've collected in the first round. So we can just go and select it from the right hand side here. So now what we've got is we've got an action that will trigger when someone adds something to that form. When that happens, we're gonna go and collect the information that has been collected via that form. Now we want to do something with it. We're gonna go and add that to the list that we've created. So we're gonna choose the option to go new step. And we're now gonna choose SharePoint as the action. So as you can see, we've now got a number of options. And what we're going to do is we're gonna choose the option to create an item. So you can see inside of here that we have the option to create item. Now we need to go and find the SharePoint site where our list is saved. So don't forget Microsoft Lists a part of SharePoint. And that's why we're using the SharePoint automation objects here. So uh, this one is stored, I believe, in Define Tomorrow 2020. I might have to go and check. No, it's just there. And I can go and see that simple list is stored inside of there. So now I'm able to populate the fields in the list. So the first one is the title, which we rename to name in our list. And we go and start adding the information from that form over to it. So from here, we should be able to go and see the question that we put in the form, which is, what is your name? So we're going to go and add that over to title. And then we can see that we also have the option to populate the field date to arrange a meeting. Now we're not gonna do this with the automation. We could choose to now send an email to someone to say, there's been a response, can you go and action it? So maybe we're going to have a look in that in a moment once we've proven that the basic functionality is working. So I'm just gonna go and click save. 
Now we'll see if the demo gods are with me, because I'm going to ask you to do something um, to go and add some information into this form. So if you scan the QR code that is on screen, let me move it over so you can see it. Hopefully a form opens up. And if I could just ask you just to put your name or any name into there, we'll go and see if this automation has worked and if your names start appearing in our list. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of seconds to scan this with your phone. Uh, if you've not scanned a QR code before, just open the camera app on your phone, hold it up. You shouldn't need to take a picture and click Safari at the top of the screen. Not seeing that, bear with me. Let's go and have a look and collect another one. So I'm just gonna download it again. There we go, just change that. So hopefully if you try again, Right, so hopefully everyone can now scan this and get a very simple form, our simple form on screen and go and add your name to it. So I think a few of you uh, have done that now, so let's go and have a look. So we're gonna go through to Microsoft lists. I can see uh, Lee Jones, Declan Bloomer, Megan Warren, Batman, thank you for joining. Uh, Toby Larone and Mickey Mouse have all been able to uh, join in and post their information into that form that has come through to the list. We'll try and do one more thing in here before I expand it and show you a much more complex use case. So what we're going to go and do is we're gonna go back to our automation and we're gonna choose another new step and I'm gonna choose the option to send a email. So I'm gonna send an email notification. And I think there was um, uh, a question earlier about how can I get notifications from uh, lists? So if, so if something has been allocated to someone, we can do this kind of thing inside list to automate people. So we would create a flow. We would say, if someone is added to it, then go and send them an email to say that they've been notified. We can build those flows up very easy. And hopefully the next demonstration will show that a little bit more. So in here, I'm just gonna say, email me, barryc at computerworld.co.uk. Subject say, a name has been added to the list. In the body of the email, I can go and say, Batman, in this example would come up, has added his name to the list. Please go and update. We could then put a link into the list or the specific item. If I have a look down through this list, we also can go and add a link to the item in there as well. And I can go and click save. Now, if you'd really like to spam me, feel free to scan it again and go and add another name to the list and we'll get an email through, but I'm not gonna show you my inbox. So trust me that that's going to work. So we go back to our list there. We can see there's been a few more people added. So thank you for the emails uh, from that perspective. But we can see that we could have collected some information. We've brought that through to a list and we've then gone and sent an email from it. We clearly could then manage the rest of the workflow in this list to say that we booked a meeting for them, what the outcome of that meeting was, did it result in a sale? So we could track that whole process through the list. Now, to take this even further, I want to show you in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I created earlier. So what we've got, if I go through to forms, I have a project initiation uh, request form. So this form has a project owner, it has a project title, it has is, uh, what budget is required, what project members, what is the project ID, the project start date, and what is the desired business outcomes? So this would be really good for tracking a project management flow through the business where we're tracking, is the project approved or declined? Has the project started? Who is involved in the project? What is it that we're trying to achieve? Are we on time? We could build this list out with custom elements so we could track all those things. But we've chosen to issue a form so the people that want to request the projects can easily go and do that without going and finding the list. This could easily be linked to from your intranet or somewhere like that. So we've got all those elements there. And what I'm just going to go and do is I'm going to open up that form. So unfortunately, you guys won't be able to access this one. So I'm not going to get a, a ton of requests. And I'm just going to go and fill in the details on here. So in this example, I'm going to use a fictitious user.
So we're using the email address uh, here uh, for the project owner. We'd need to obviously put that in the question on the form. The project title is Microsoft Microsoft Can't Type Today Adoption Project. What budget is required for this project? We're going to put one million pounds or lots of zeros at least. Not going to put any project members in for ease. I'm going to put a project ID that could be aligned with an internal system, a CRM or ERP system or something like that. I'm going to select the date I would like to go and start the project. I'm going to write the business outcomes, uh, better utilization of Microsoft 365. Now I'm going to go and choose to go and submit that. And if I come through to lists now, and I go into the project tracker list that I created earlier, we can see that the Microsoft Adoption Project has been added to the bottom of this list. I can see that we've got a project log. I can see we've got the value through to here. We've got a number of different fields that are being tracked. But where the intelligence comes in is with the automation we've got on the back end. So let's go and have a look at Power Automate at the flow that has been created to go and run this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to my flows. The element I didn't show you earlier is how to go and check if this flow is working correctly. So if I go and click on the flow, you can see every time that you guys added your name to the previous form, we can see that it was triggered and it was successful. If any of those failed, we can click them and you can then go and run through it to see exactly the element where it had failed. So I've got a message here. Can you clarify which type of flow you create to ensure the flow is not linked to an individual's own account? So in this example here, I am creating it against an own account. You could do it against a service account or something like that. Uh, but certainly here with what I'm doing, I'm doing a automated flow um, against my specific account, but we could do that against service accounts. And certainly um, uh, the Microsoft specialist, the technical specialist at Computer World may be able to help you to do that to further abstract that with the Azure automation pieces. So we're gonna go through uh, to the flows now, and we're gonna go and have a look at the two flows that I've created to make this work the way we want it to do. The first one is the one that we've just seen work. So as I click it, you can see that that's just ran one moment ago. And this is very similar to the one that I created first. So when the new response comes in on the form, grab the details. The first thing I am doing is I'm taking that email address and I'm finding that user in Office 365 so I can do some more, more intelligent lookups and work with it in a moment. And then I have an apply for each just in case there are multiple values inside of there to populate everything that you've just seen in that list. So this is very much the same as the first demonstration, but we've got much more information coming in from the form. We're translating the user from the email address and then we're putting it into the list. But where this gets interesting now is the second automation that we've got. So we want to create a project team. So increasingly what we see is Microsoft Teams is becoming a hub to manage your projects. You might add tabs in it with things like planner or a list to track your relevant elements inside of there. We want to create a team per project, but we want some way end to end to be able to manage the life cycle of that team. So what we've done here is we've said, when an item inside the list, and we've created a special, a special view for any pending items is created, and if it is uh, been set to approve, if the change that's just been made it is, means it's been a set to approved, then we want to create a team. That team is gonna be created with um, bracket project bracket at the beginning, the name of the project, and then hyphen project ID, that's the standard we want to implement. And we're gonna add a description to that team. Further to that, we're gonna add the project owner as the owner of the team. We're gonna update the item in the SharePoint list to change the status of the project to approved. And we're going to um, add the ID from the team. So if we want to do any future automation, we can do that. We're then gonna get a list of the channels that has been created and we're going to go and post a message inside of that channel saying, this team has been created for the project. Please feel free to invite those people who are needed, et cetera, et cetera. So we can see all the way from being able to be able to create, get, collect the data from the form, import that into the list, 
take that information, have an approval workflow, and then go into create an automated team on the back end. So let's go and see if all this works. So we're gonna go through the list now. I'm gonna go and change this to have a look at my pending items, which I haven't got any there for the minute, bear with me. So I'm gonna go and choose this one here, which was the one we just did. And I'm going to go and choose more and go approve reject. So I'm gonna approve that. So that's now been approved. So hopefully our workflow is gonna be starting on the back end. Might have to give it a second to run. So we go and have a look at the create project teams flow. I can see the last one was four minutes ago. So we'll give it a second. Sometimes they take a second to run or the demo gods might not have been there with me and we might have got a problem, we'll see. So what we should see in here is we will see a team be created like we've got here. And we will see the message, welcome to the project team. Now, whilst I'm here, whilst we've been waiting for it, because I was too impatient, I can now see that the Microsoft adoption project has got its own team. And if I go into the general channel in a moment, hopefully that message will be posted. So if we come on the back end and go and have a look at the flow, there we go. And we're just gonna go into it and view it. We can see that all elements have been successful. We can see that the message has been posted in the team and fingers crossed, we can go and see that that has now been updated. So from that perspective, we've been able to go the complete life cycle up until the point of creating the team for the project. The team now has a site where they can go and talk about the project. The business has a single place where they can monitor all their projects across the organization, what status they're in, what their current update is. We've got a project log using the append functionality, and we could add further notifications in there and updates. So if the project was due to be finished on this date, we could then say, let's go and send an update um, to the project owner and say, is this project finished? Can you update us inside the project log as to what is going on? So just wanted to um, answer a few questions there. Okay, so there was one saying, do you suggest multiple flows or one long complex flow? It really depends for what it is that you're going to do. I like to break it up into individual items, but it will depend on what you're trying to achieve. Make sure you name your flows appropriately so you not know what's gonna trigger when. Um, there is a limitation to this. So if you were on the earlier se session, Microsoft Lists isn't a database. The relational functionality is limited. We can do it. We can go and choose a lookup field to go and look up one value to go and find the data from another, but it is heavily limited limited as to what is possible with that. So generally we keep it simple, look for the most simplest way for it to work, but we just need to be thinking about what are the milestones? What do we want to be doing at each stage? Now, uh, apologies if there's been some blurriness on the screen, um, but more than happy to go through any of the individual elements with you individually, if you'd like to look into this a bit, a bit more. And if your organization has specific use cases where you think lists could be useful, but you just want a bit of help getting the automation right or configuring it right, then please reach out to your computer world account manager, more than happy to help you. So if there's anything else that you would like uh, me to answer during the session, happily be here for um, a, a little while. Um, so ask those in the screen, but if not, thank you ever so much for joining. Thank you for joining me today for Define Tomorrow and be sure to check back in tomorrow for our security day. Thank you for joining. Thank <laughs> you.